Thanks for stopping on the board circuit. Um, my question is for Dylan. Um, huge Teen Wolf fan. Cool, man. Um, I know a lot of your work on that show is really comedic. Um, and even though it went the darker path on this past season. Yeah. Um, so what was it like being in this movie where it was really action-packed and having to act sort of like with the action and running around and like CGI creepers? Um, yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a challenge, man. Um, but it's... Uh, for an act, I mean, as an actor, it's a, it's a, it's a role that you absolutely would kill for. You know, it's the unsung hero, the, the you know ordinary ordinary person in extraordinary situations. You know, it's it's that's the kind of movie I love growing up. It's the kind of role I look for as an actor. I see Styles that way, you know, many times. But you're right, it's it's a different thing physically, uh, uh, and you know, his energy. It's way different. It's it's much slower. It's it's more dramatic. Um, I mean, it's it's just a challenge for me. It, you know, honestly, um, but uh, but something I really want to work on and, and continue to do. And he rose to that challenge. <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, I hope I did okay. <laughs> Thanks. Next question, Susanna. Hi. Um, what do you think is driving the current fascination with young adult post-apocalyptic novels and movies? Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> how could you not? How could that not spawn a franchise? Uh, I don't know. I, it's it's interesting. It's I, I think basically, uh, young people like being treated like adults, and not being pandered to. And the post apocalyptic thing is kind of a separate issue, I think. And I think our movie, Maze Runner, we don't know it's post apocalyptic. It's not. You couldn't even really describe it that. It's more Lord of the Flies than it is, say, um, End of the World. Um, Spoiler, you know, second movie's more of that. Um, um, but I think that's the way, that's the approach we took. And, and honestly, I, I will say that I, I tried to make something outside of the YA thing. I didn't try to box myself in with that. Um, it's just a movie that has young people in it dealing with very kind of, you know, adult situations, you know, and uh, taking it as seriously as possible and make sure there's a lot of honesty and truth there and at the same time having a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's what, what we set out to do. I, I was just going to say, speaking kind of on behalf of the acting department um, with, with Phil, it's like I sort of reject the, the term young adult to, for two reasons. Uh, one, because I feel like it's slightly patronizing to, to, to young audiences to suggest that um, they're confined to watching sci-fi drama. I don't think that's um, fair. Um, uh, but secondly, and, and more um, particularly to, to, to Maze Runner, I feel like uh, other films in the same kind of bracket, you know, that you would consider YA, um, slightly have the balance different to, to, I think, the Maze Runner. I think they put, um, they put action and adventure and, and the visuals at the forefront and character and, and, and the emotion kind of takes a back seat. And with this, there's a real kind of um, integrity to the characters. Um, Dylan heads up, you know, what is just a, just a, a, an awesome list of performances from, from the cast and, um, uh, you know, the, the integrity of the characters and their emotional relationships are, are really kind of uh, the form and core of this movie and I think people are going to be surprised by that. Yeah, a lot of emotion. All right, our next question is from Tyler. Hey Dylan, this is a question for you. Um, I really liked your performance in the first time. I thought it was excellent. Oh, thanks, man. And um, cool. I see this as your first leading blockbuster movie. Was there a certain mindset you went into going into this? Do you, and what do you feel about being positioned as like the Katniss for the male audience? Uh, luckily, I haven't thought about it like that. It's going to crap. No, I, I honestly never thought about it like that. You know. Um, these things always, you know, they, they always get blown up, it seems, after we've done the movie, and, you know, now it's like, it's, uh, someone's vibrating. Someone's yeah. saxophone. <laughs> one of these recorders, one of your recorders is coming off. Awesome. Um, <laughs> um, I honestly, uh, you know, our movie, we, it was, it was such a small movie, especially for a film like this, like, we had, uh, we had the smallest scale budget time, you know, we were uh, restrained by a lot of things, so it never felt like this was the next Hunger Games, like, we were doing the next, like, I'm the next Katniss, it really never... Uh, I never felt the weight of that at all, and I still don't. I don't think, you know, I think that's not. Uh, <laughs> I don't you're you're a dude, again. too. Well I'm also, I also am, am a man. <laughs> a boy. A guy. Um, I don't know, but, you know, with all that said, I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, you know, to have this one be mine. You know, I mean, I really feel close to it. I, we all do. We love the story. Uh, you know, we, we fell in love with James's book, and. And then we found we just like the entire process. It was it was insane, like what we all went through out there together. You know, just battling conditions and 
and just things like the budget, like I was talking about, and time, and, and, and we just made it happen. And, and now everyone, you know, the first question I get now, funny enough, is always, you know, how does it feel to be in such a big movie? And I'm like, cool, we made it seem that way. That's awesome. We are, <laughs> yeah. we are planning a Thomas versus Katniss film a few years down the road. <laughs> <laughs> like the grudge match sort of situation. Yeah. Nice. I think she would kick my ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, she would. She <laughs> Sandro, next question. Uh, well, in the wake of your BAFTA and MTV awards and the success of Weird and Nervous, how does your career feel in a different place and your Hollywood position different from even a year ago? You can make me sound a lot cooler than I am, man. That's, um, that's very nice of you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, it's, it's funny. Um, all that stuff is really lovely and it still feels like some administrative errors went down. Um, but I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, you know what was coolest for me and, and the kind of thing that um, I sort of um, try and um, keep as my focus is, is you know, working with, with great people. I'm, I'm sat with three of them right now. Um, but um, being involved in projects that um, you know have heart and and, and have um, you know have a, a, a sense of real about them, and I think uh, on face value, on paper, people might not expect that that's what this project is, but it, but it fully is, and, and um, uh, you know I'm very very grateful to have been involved in that um, and to have played you know a, a part in making it happen. Um, but yeah, uh, off the back of the things you're talking about, I mean, nothing's really changed. And, and the, the term Hollywood, I just don't think applies to me because I still live in West London with my mom. So uh, uh, and nothing's really changed from that perspective. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited to, to, to you know, carry on on this maze on a journey with these guys. And, and I, I, hope it's a, I hope it's a long journey as well because um, uh, this man's got a lot of thoughts and uh, a lot more in him. Yeah, I will say I'm really excited to see what happens with people seeing Will now, especially after Brother Miller's, uh, to see kind of Will's range. This is a very different character for Will, much more serious, much more uh, kind of a, a hard edge to him. Um, I think it's I think people are going to like him. Oscar or nothing this time. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha. Hi. Um, this question is for the Western Hollywood Awards. Um, what do you think of the pressure of what's the pressure been like? It's actually been a really good pressure, um, um, because you know I have something to you know something to aim for essentially you know try to, to you know that, uh, people like the book and, and I was a fan I mean I, I was a fan of that book so um, I just attacked it from that point of view trying to make sure that we were true to that spirit that James created and that sort of sense of uh, adventure and um, a kind of uh, a sense of truth to like the the world itself. Um, so the only pressure really was just trying to um, execute sort of the perfect movie I had in my head on the screen. And you know, like what Dylan was saying, we had a lot of challenges, but it was all it was a fantastic experience actually because you know Dylan and Will and all the rest of the cast, all my crew, everybody, um, we were just all in it 100% trying to just make a cool movie together. And we had you know it was not easy. And making a movie in general is not easy, but. Um, because we were all in it together and, 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 and had a really unique kind of bonding experience, we were all, you know, had a really great time making it, and I think that shows up inside the movie, you know? So, um, so it's really, all, all I'm saying, it's been the best kind of pressure. It's, it's just the pressure that drives you to make something really good. So. Fabian, yes, I have a question for Will. Have you heard about, uh, from Jennifer Aniston after the joke you made? Uh, I, think I, <laughs> I uh, you didn't think it was a real text? <laughs> um, no, I have I haven't heard from I haven't heard from Jen. No. I don't think I will. Um, I think that's unlikely. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can you do it again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the whole thing with your phones. Oh, she's texting me. Um, yeah, no, I, I haven't. I don't. I don't think I will. So you don't text her at all. Uh, we don't text, no. I don't say we do. No. Yeah, she was really turned off by that kiss. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Rap. Rap. Terrence. Uh, my question is for Wes and James. Uh, the Grievers are really well known for being part of, of this first book. And so what was it like bringing them to life uh, on the screen? And where, where the, so what was the process of that like? Well, all, all I will say is they their vision perfectly matched mine. I feel like they took 
the grievers from the book and made them even better. And uh, it's going to be a big hit with my readers. Yeah, I think it's a unique design. I think it, hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping that it will be one of those unique kind of movie monsters that are, just stands out from all the rest. Um, but, you know, I, I took what James described in the book was biomechanical and, you know, nasty and scary and metallic and, you know, all these things and, and came up with a design um, with some of my artists to, you know, that would be really fun to animate, basically. So. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, I can't. I've read the We've got some really great people working on it, too. Um, there's a guy named Eric DeBoer for the, our, our VFX studio, uh, Method Studios. Um, they brought Eric DeBoer on, who was the guy behind the Life of Pi Tiger. So we've got some really serious guys working on making this thing absolutely believable and cool. So um, fingers crossed. People like it. Um, hi, uh, I'm Mark with uh, Magic Radio. My question is for the author. Uh, do you, who do you write for? Like, do you set out to like say, I'm going to do a young adult novel, or does it just kind of turn out that way? Uh, what's your kind of thought process? Well, I guess for me, when I was a teenager, that's when I fell in love with reading. Uh, Stephen King was my young adult section. And it's always stayed magical to me, just that time period in my life in terms of storytelling. And so when I write, I think I just naturally go to what I would have loved at that age. But I never, ever think about the age of my audience. I don't ever write down. I don't ever think, oh, this is too much for them. This is... A too big of a word. I mean, I just, I think that's why it has crossed over to so many adults, and uh, I just write the coolest thing I can write. Same thing with the movie, actually. I mean, you make the movie for the kid and everybody, you know? It's, you don't make it for kids, you know? So we try to treat it from a very serious point of view, just like James did, and, you know, um, young people dealing with adult situations, you know? Can go right here? Okay. So you mentioned that the movie's going to be incredibly emotional, and so of course with emotion often comes music. Is there a role that music played, whether, whether it was like the creation of it, getting into your characters, and or is there just going to be a banging soundtrack anyway to come along with it? I'm a big soundtrack buff. Yeah. I love soundtracks. I mean, it's all I listen to. Since I was 16 years old, um, that's really all I listen to in the car. T.S., you can talk about it. You, you drove up with me today, and all I play is soundtracks. Um, Space Jam soundtrack? Yeah, so, exactly. So, so uh, um, yeah, John Paisano was one of our composers, and he's a guy that, um, you know, he kind of got his training from John Williams. And then he went off and worked with Hans Zimmer for a while, and then was handpicked by John, um, uh, John Powell to, to do the TV show version of the, the How to Train Your Dragon stuff. So this guy got a really eclectic mix of like kind of that old school kind of classic film sound where, where music becomes a character in the movie and it supports the emotion, but it also has this kind of modern edge to it that's kind of hip and cool and sweet. So I'm excited for people, especially soundtrack buffs, to kind of check out the score. It's, there's some really cool tracks in there. So. One of, my, one of my happiest moments during this process has been when I told Wes, because I write to soundtracks, everything from Lord of the Rings to Aliens to you name it, and I said, we're not going to have one of those typical you know, pop song soundtracks, are we? And he said, no, we're going full epic orchestral score. And, and I, I was lucky to go to the studio when they filmed the music, or score, score yeah. whatever. <laughs> And it blew me away. I, it's awesome. It yeah, is it's very, really good. very yeah, awesome. We try to do a really good job with it. Uh, we have time for one more question. Go so, ahead. because you brought up soundtracks, I was wondering if you could tell us what your favorite soundtracks are. Mm. Jurassic Park would be a high one. Um, <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's just, it's huge. It's, it's fantastic. Oh man, I have so many. I love it. <laughs> if you, Aliens has an awesome yeah, soundtrack. Aliens is good. It really creates a good mood for writing. And also, there's this one score you gotta check out. It's called Maze Runner. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Bourne trilogy. Uh, or, 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 I wonder what it is now, but I love I love that. That sort of the violin in there is genius, and uh, yeah, I love that. I know Dylan's favorite is La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> the last Superman was really good, actually. The, the last yeah. one, Hans Zimmer, that was, did a good job on that one.